Hey, what's up folks? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at the Sketch Drawing Toy. So this is a snap fit case that has the TFT feather wing and a feather in the back there. This is a really fun uh, sketch drawing toy inspired by an Etch-a-Sketch style project. So with the display, um, you can draw pixels with these two potentiometers. And what's cool is that you can use this switch to do a pen up and down. So then you can move a cursor and kind of draw separate shapes that's really neat. And then you can use the center button to clear. Uh, so that's really fun. Uh, I got a built-in holder for the slide switch. So you guys might know that from a couple of my cases. And uh, I have a snap fit case, right? So I have two halves that snap fit together. So you can open them by just squeezing these two like that. You can get that open there. I have a pretty beefy battery here, but this is uh, the RP2040 Feather, nice pink edition and the TFT feather wing here. This is the 2.4 inch version. Um, so what's cool about this is that uh, instead of attaching uh, the TFT feather wing to the case itself, it's actually attached to a PCB bracket, this green thing over here. So the, PP the PCB bracket allows you to attach and secure the TFT feather wing uh, with these, uh, these nylon M25 sized screws and hex nuts. We'll take a look at those in the CAD. Um, but it's a really good method to make it so you can have the snap fit case and not have any screws um, exposed. Um, so that's cool. The back here has a built-in button pusher. Um, so you can see that uh, this little shape here allows you to press this down and it flexes and it just about hovers over the onboard reset switch. So it actually uh, um, hits that when you press that. So that's a cool way to reset, hard reset the board without having to take it apart. Um, there's some extra bits here. Um, so you see that there's some snaps here. There's one there and there's a bit of an end stop flat edge here um, for that for that bottom. Another cool feature is that I have these uh, these vent lines here and uh, that's all done with uh, the thin extrude. And it's a really good way to kind of get um, a nice uh, grill and do some style uh, stuff to it. And uh, it actually helps um, flex this open and it uh, allows you to print a little bit faster because you're not having to print the whole thing. So that's kind of a neat thing. So let me go ahead and uh, close this up. Just gonna make sure that uh, none of the wires are being kinked or the battery, it just snaps like that. You have a nice large opening here for the uh, USB connector on the feather. And then uh, let me turn it on. So that, that built-in um, holder there is nice. And then if you wanna reset without having to open it, you can do that. Nicely, cool. All right, so there you go. Start drawing stuff. These are good, right? Layer, <laughs> layer. But that's yeah, gonna take a minute. Any hoodle? Let's uh, take a look at the uh, the learn guide in uh, Fusion 360. So let's jump into uh, into that. So you can download and build your own project here. It's got all the all the files and all the instructions and all the code on um, putting this together. So if you want to um, get notified when these are back in stock, uh, you can do that, or you can get a feather if they're in stock already. Um, but yeah, that's where all the, the files are and the tutorial lives here. So I'll have a link in the description of the video. Cool. So let's look at Fusion. So the project is available to download, same place. I'll have a link in the description. Um, but the first thing I wanna uh, note is the PCB bracket. Uh, so let me hide some of these things here. So we can take our bottom here and our top hide those and just kind of show uh, the PCB bracket. So you can see here that the Feather TFT has four mounting holes and the mounting holes are in close proximity uh, to the display itself. So the one of the better ways to mount it is to have the head of the screws coming from this side um, because when you try to have these hex nuts on the other side here, um, they can intersect with uh, the bezel of the display and that can damage your display. So you wanna be very careful when attaching uh, this PCB um, to anything else. So I found that this method works fairly well um, and uh, just be very careful with the, 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 the bezel of the display. So one of the ways to attach um, the PCB to the 3D printed bracket is to have these hex nuts in between in between them really, uh, because if I didn't, and if I had this area, it would start to crash into some of the components that are close to the edge, notably these capacitors here. So if I didn't have these nuts there, uh, you, you wouldn't be, you could easily damage, not easily, but you could damage uh, the onboard components. 
and uh, that's uh, that's always a problem there. So you just want to be careful uh, with that. You can see here that you would also be getting close proximity to the uh, the onboard micro SD card holder and in the on-off switch. So this method worked out really well. And instead of having um, like a built-in standoff for the bracket, I'm just using hex nuts because they're already there and um, they are always gonna be consistent um, length and height. So um, that's why I have them in there. So they worked out pretty, pretty good there. Now the only other screws that are here are uh, these four M3 screws on the corner and that actually gets fastened into uh, the top. So that's how this is working. You have the, uh, the PCB bracket get secured to the top half. And you can't see the screws here because they're kind of hidden there. But um, if I get rid of the hardware, you can see here that the, there's plenty of, of, of uh, depth for that standoff. And this standoff is built into the corners of the, of the top half of the, of the case. And they're about eight millimeters tall. So plenty of clearance uh, for the display. So let's take a look at how much uh, that helps uh, create this sort of a bezel thing. So when you have those standoffs, uh, keeping your PCB bracket elevated, you can do these kind of fun geometry uh, to create kind of a, of a built-in bezel here uh, for the display. So that's kind of a cool way, because without that, you would have a lot of gap that would reveal some of the edges. And uh, to get rid of that, I just added um, this nice beefy bezel, and I added some chaffered edges or drafted edges uh, to make it look uh, like it's at a 45 degree. And it is, and it prints out really well too. So that's cool. Um, one thing to note though, when you are uh, creating a sort of a cutout for the display, all the displays are gonna be different. Even though the model is one-to-one -one accurate, during the, manufa during the manufacturing process, sometimes it might get offset by a 10th of a millimeter or whatever. So you always want to do a 3D printed test piece to show how much of the display you're actually revealing. So I'm gonna go over to the overhead and show um, how much offset I've added to the display. And it's kind of funny because the, uh, the, the project itself allows you to draw on the edge. So this gives you an indicator of how much of the display, the edge of the display you're showing. Um, so here you can see I'm drawing at the bottom. And as I get to the right side and I move up, um, I'm kind of, I could offset that a little bit more and uh, even though I'm already at the final stages of the thing, I thought it was okay, you know, it's, it's fine. It gets hidden a little bit there, but you can still kind of see it. Uh, so you, it's, it's uh, one out of the four uh, edges are, are, are dead on, but this is kind of a cool way to see, am I, am I showing enough? Am I revealing enough display? But again, every single TFT feather ring is gonna be slightly different because during the manufacturing process, um, folks have to, have to use double-sided tape to stick the display itself to the PCB, and it's not always gonna be the same. There isn't a machine that does it like perfectly every time. So at least with this product, the TFT Featherwing, you wanna be a little bit, um, uh, you just wanna be aware of how much you're revealing and how much you're showing off in the display. Maybe you don't need to show all the display, maybe you're doing rounded edges and stuff, but just for this project, you kinda of wanna be able to display all of the pixels. Yeah, so that's kinda of what I got going on there. Um, so just test it. All right, cool. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the uh, slide switch and how to create, or, or rather just to be aware of the uh, the slide switch built-in thing. For any project that needs an on-off switch and it's, it's relatively small and it's a handheld, I really like using this, uh, this method uh, to getting a slide switch um, fitted inside here. So the slide switch is able to fit in here at an angle and it gets, um, it's, it's just kind of press fitted and it's, it's friction fitted. So that means you don't need any glue or screws to attach it because it really doesn't have any mounting holes. Uh, but there are a, a series of walls that kind of keep uh, the thing from being pressed out. And you, on, the, on the back side here, you can see that uh, there's a nice little opening with some drafted edges that allow you to access the little actuator on the built-in holder. I have a full half an hour tutorial on how to put this together step-by-step I'll have a card in the description, so click on those cards if you want to see that and uh, get uh, get the whole recipe on how to design these because they kind of have to be built into your case, which uh, which is fine. But you could also make an, an external module too, which I also show in that video. So check that one out. Um, yeah, just be aware that it's pretty much the exact same dimensions and recipe, so that's kind of 
what I what I always kind of go to when I want to have an on off switch that's embedded like that. Now the potentiometers, the button and the the toggle switch, they're all panel mounted, so there's nothing really there as long as you have enough clearance around your component, uh, you should be fairly good. Uh, one thing here though that I probably should have modeled is you, you see this uh, this big momentary button. Normally they come with the hex nut, and that hex nut can be kind of big. So I was I got lucky where the hex nut just about started clipping uh, one of these uh, surfaces here for the built-in slide switch. But I was able to get away with it. It wasn't too bad. It was just a really nice tight fitting. But I wish I had modeled that in here because then I would have maybe pushed this a little bit more so to have a little bit more clearance. Um, but yeah, it's always a good thing to model um, your hardware because then you can get a really good accurate, uh, you know, representation of uh, if your stuff's going to uh, uh, to intersect or not. You can always get a good example of like, as your screws are long enough or not, <laughs> or are they too long, right? Cool. Um, so yeah, let's take a look next at how the two halves are snap fitting. And one really good way to do that is to do cross section analysis. So here, looking at it from the side view, you can see I have a little bit of a different going on here. So on this side, you can see I have the, uh, the snap fit nubs and the little grabbers on the bottom. And what I've done is I've made it so that it doesn't go across the whole surface or the whole length of the case. It stops right here, right before it starts getting to the, uh, to the USB connector because it, this would crash into the feather and that's a bad thing. So that's why I don't have it there. Let me get rid of uh, the analysis, the section analysis and just kind of reveal um, the, the, the bottom half because the bottom half is really what has the main snaps. I'll hide the hardware as well and the PCB bracket. So here we go. So you see here that the left and the right sides are pretty symmetrical. It's, it's a mirrored feature. So whatever I did here is also on this side. But you'll notice that I really, I could have done that for this, uh, the bottom and the top surface, uh, but I really didn't need to. Um, so I just added one here and it's a custom length. So it doesn't go across the whole length of it. And I like to have these corners open because it allows the case to be opened more easily. A lot of the times you'll see my, my sort of classic snap fit cases, the snap fit geometry goes along the whole case and that's okay in some certain, in some cases, but for this one, I wanted to be very uh, specific and I wanted to uh, have those corners open so that's just easier to open. So now on this surface here, I don't actually have a grabber. I just have a end stop. It's just a flat, extrude that goes up and there's no tapered angles or anything. It just doesn't need that. Um, so if I bring back the top, you can see kind of how it, um, how it's working there. So this just prevents the case from being uh, slid uh, from that way. So it just stops that from happening there. And then this, this stop will stop it from over there, that grabber there. So that's kind of how that's working. And then on the left and the right sides, you can't open it because uh, both, both, both sides are acting on it. So that's, uh, that's how it stays secured. All right, so sometimes when you're making a snap fit case, you really don't need to uh, have it go across the whole thing. Be very specific and strategic about where you're going to place your grabbers, where you need them. Another reason uh, I have it here, the snapper on this surface, is because without it, I originally just had a regular end stop. And what happened was I would see this little gap in between the two. Uh, so there, there, there just kept being a gap there like that. And so what I ended up doing was just adding that grabber there and that made it stayed secure shut. And that's uh, that's a nice way to do it. But I didn't really need it here because this area really didn't have a gap because none of the, uh, there's no components really there that are kind of preventing it from, from kind of being opened. Um, so yeah, that's why I have it very specific on where I put my snaps. Now another fun feature on the back here, on the bottom half is this um, button presser. And the way the button presser works is that it is designed to, to have a little extrusion uh, cylinder, and that cylinder hovers right above the feather, the, the reset button that's on the feather. And luckily enough, um, just about all of the feathers have the reset button in the exact same location. So for the what I showed you here on physically, I have the RP2040 feather, and that tends to work fine because, uh, hey, the button's right there too. It's off a little bit, but it's enough to still actuate it, which is fine. Uh, but with the M4, it's it's pretty perfect and accurate. 
And I actually have a tutorial on how to uh, sketch this out and using the, the thin extrude feature, you can create these features. Um, yeah, anytime I create this, I always have to make the feature a little bit longer than I always think because your finger is kind of large and uh, whatever the length is here ended up working really good. Uh, but with that, uh, once I had that button presser and I wanted to add these, these lines to create kind of a vent opening, I had to be strategic about my lines because I don't want them to intersect because then it would just kind of fall apart, right? So um, yeah, I just use the trim uh, tool when I'm sketching and I just kind of massage uh, the lines so they're not uh, coming across of it. So they're actually two separate sketches and uh, that way they are um, independent from each other. So you can see here my reset button pusher is just the line and I use the extrusion line to extrude that out. And then my, uh, my grills themselves are, are kind of done like that. And I just did some offsets once I created it. And then uh, I really am a fan of the fillet rule where you can just say, hey, hey, fillet, just, just make a fillet on this, uh, on this feature because I have too many edges to select. So that's always a good thing too. Um, I'll quickly um, go to that and see if I can get to it. The, the fillet rule is always a nice one. Oh, uh, where are you, fillet rule? There you are. So here's the fillet rule. You can always go here under fillet, change it to rule fillet. And then where it says faces or features, I just selected the one extrusion, which was extruding all these lines. And I say, I only want the fillets and I want the radius of two. And that saved me maybe an hour of having to select shoes. How, how many edges is that select? I wish it would tell me how many edges it's doing, but it doesn't. And I don't have to know about it. I love this feature. <laughs> it's the best. So huge shout out to the fillet rule. One of, one of my time saving secrets, <laughs> but that's going to do it really. Um, it's a fairly simple case, but there are always some things to look out for, uh, particularly like when you're working with a display, like the TFT Featherwing, there's some things to kind of just be aware of. You can download the uh, the 3D model for the TFT Featherwing. Just be aware that there are no uh, headers that are populated on there. Maybe you want to add your own. So that's why I kind of have it uh, free there. But you do have the onboard components like the micro SD card, the on off switch, the reset button, some of the capacitors, and of course the display with uh, the bezel and everything. So, all right, there you go. Uh, real quick, I'll show the learn guide again. You can get uh, the full tutorial on how to build it, all the parts there. If they're out of stock, you can, of course, sign up to be notified when they're back in stock. Don't forget, you could also check out the GitHub repository and download all sorts of Adafruit models. That's going to do it for me. Until next time, make sure to make a great day. Bye, folks.